Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this podcast focused on the special retirement supplement. And as we ended our last session with Kathleen, uh, we talked about how this is very confusing. And there's a lot of you out there that uh, are going to receive some great information to make sure that you don't make any mistakes when utilizing um, this provision. So Kathleen, welcome back. Good to be here. All right, let's let's get into it. What is the first special retirement supplement and why is it so important? Great. The special uh, retirement supplement is something that most federal workers who are approaching retirement had heard of, but unfortunately, most of them don't understand the different requirements to receive the supplement. And some retirees are including this supplement in their retirement planning when they're not really eligible for it. And then the reverse side, there are some that are not, that are not even considering the uh, supplement in their retirement plans, even if they are eligible to receive it. But the special retirement supplement is actually an annuity that OPM or the Office of Personal Management provides to the eligible uh, for retirees. And the special retirement supplement sometimes is called the retirement annuity supplement. So sometimes you, you hear it referred to as the annuity or SRS, has many names. Uh, it is designed for the FERS employees to be compensated for the loss of the Social Security income between their MRA and before age 62 or before being eligible to apply for Social Security. Okay, can you go over the eligibility requirements then? Yes, uh, there's basically two categories, the immediate or the deferred. Um, the, if you're able to view this, there's a chart on the screen. Uh, it's a great visual, I'm great, I like visuals. So you see here on the one side for the immediate supplement benefit, uh, the retiree has to meet the age and the service requirement. As you see here, you know, it's the MRA 30 years or 60 years old or 20 years. And then of course you've got the special provisions there as well. And that's age 50 with 20 years of credible service or any age with 25 years of credible service. And then of course you have the mandatory age uh, 56 for traffic controllers and 57 for firefighters and law enforcement officers. Now, sometimes it's almost easier to uh, remember what is not or who is not eligible for the immediate supplement. And basically, these are your disability retirees, uh, anyone retiring under the MRA plus 10 provision. Then you have um, anyone eligible for a deferred annuity and anyone retiring at age 62 or older. And of course, age 62 is over, meaning you're basically eligible for Social Security. So the other area is the deferred supplement. And these are for the retirees that will be getting this benefit in the future once they reach their MRA. And of course, these are the early retirement provisions, uh, and that is either age 50 with 20 years of service or any age with at least 25 years of service. And note here that the SRS or the annuity will begin once or deferred until the annuitant becomes the MRA, which is the minimum retirement age. And just some kind of special notes to keep in your mind is there is no election for this when you get to your retirement. Uh, you do not pay for it. And the OPM uh, annuity is calculated. Uh, it's based on your fur years of civilian service, regular and temporary time. Now, there's some uh, temporary time before 1989 that might have to be bought back or made deposits for, and that's a different topic. And then all of this is calculated on the anticipated Social Security calculations at age 62. 
And included in these calculations, there's no military service being used for calculations. And uh, also remember that uh, you receive no COLAs except for the special provisions. And most important, uh, this is all uh, subject to the earnings test. So the chart below, if you're able to view the calculation, is a formula uh, for the special retirement uh, benefit. So again, you take your social security statement, and you can get this off the website, or if you're over age 60, it's usually mailed to you once a year. Uh, the estimated age is 62, you divide that by 40, and you multiply the results by the number of years you have been a per employee. So here's the visual, uh, the formula, Social Security benefit times 62 times number of years divided by 40, and you get your benefit. So here we have 30 years of service, uh, four years of military and monthly Social Security benefit estimation at age 62, which is your $1,200. So we take your $1,200, and we times that by your 26. Uh, remember, we don't use military. And you divide that by 40. And so your um, supplemental benefit would be $780 a month. So again, what OPM is trying to calculate is what percentage of a person's Social Security benefit computed at age 62 is actually due to their first service. Now. The, retire, the retiree will receive that portion up until the time they are 62. Again, that's because they're eligible for Social Security and that benefit will stop. And it stops again because this is paid by OPM and not by the Social Security Administration and is included in the retiree's pay. Okay, so uh, let me interject here for those listening that are unable to view the charts at the end of the session we will i uh, will give you instruction on how to view uh, this presentation because i think the charts are important for this session so okay so how soon can a retiree expect the benefit then well the government is the government and it can take opm up to anywhere between nine to 12 months to actually complete all their calculations and so uh, you won't get that specific check um, you, that would be included in your check. You'll get a separate check until the calculations are, are uh, calculated, and then it will show up in your check. However, whatever the supplement that they think you might be getting to what you're actually getting, everything will be squared away uh, when everything is finalized. So um, again, I want to mention that when you get this benefit, uh, like your seven hundred eighty dollars here, uh, just remember that that number stays from the time that you take your supplement until age sixty-two, and you don't receive any COLA, so it does not increase. And this is true for everyone receiving the regular or uncovered for retirees, special retirement supplement, no exceptions except for your survivor annuitants. Now, um, I know I've mentioned this uh, other times, but this is something I have not mentioned. And the supplement is not paid to those in a phased retirement situation. But once they uh, are out of the phased retirement and all the requirements are met and they enter into the full retirement, then they're eligible for this. Uh, transfers, employees are eligible for the annuity. That's usually five years plus CSRS and voluntary transfers to FERS. Okay, so, so then the next slide uh, illustrates the earning test. So what's, what is the earnings test? Well, the earnings test is uh, something that the government has come up with and says that since you're getting the supplement and if you decide that you want to go back to work, that you can only make $18,240 a year for 2020. 
If you make any more than that, you will be penalized. So this chart here kind of gives you an illustration of it. Uh, in the first line here, it says you reach full retirement age after 2019, but you don't have a full year of work. In other words, from January 1 to December 31st. Um, actually, that's in your second column here. Uh, but on your first column here, here's the 18, 240,000. And so for every dollar, two dollars that you make over $18,240, you have to give them one dollar back. And then the 46 and the 48, that comes for a partial year. And then when you reached your full retirement age, there's, there's no test whatsoever. Now, basically why you have this penalty is because they said that you really can't have, you know, the both worlds. You can't have a retirement income and still go to work. I mean, when you get a retirement supplemental income, you're supposed to be retired. So the SRS annuity retires earning test is basically the same test for those receiving Social Security who are younger than their full age uh, and that is either 65 to 67. So if you begin your social security check uh, and you start taking at age 62, when you stop receiving your supplemental check, you're penalized uh, with the same earnings test here until you get to your full retirement age. So again, for your supplemental years, for every $2, you're going to be penalized every uh, $1 for every $2 you make, and this has to be on earned income that exceeds that exempt amount. Wow. Could they make it any more confusing? <laughs> yes, it's the government. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so I have to ask this then. So what is considered earned income? Well, earned income is uh, very confusing for some uh, retirees because they receive income from different sources that they've never been taxed on. So they believe that that is earned income. However, it is not. What is earned income is salary and wages and net income from any kind of self-employment that's subject to all the taxes and you receive a W-2 for it. So if you don't receive a W-2 for it, then it's not earned income. Like we have some military retirees, you have uh, the get the money from DFAST, you have other pension income. So any kind of retirement income, including for annuity, that is not considered earned income. No distributions from your IRAs, 401k, TSP, no dividend, interest, capital gains, uh, no rental income, that's definitely not earned in the way that the government wants you to be earned. Uh, no tax-free income or anything of that nature. Uh, none of that is considered earned income. So it gives you a lot of leeway there, but still if you go out and you decide you're going to want to be, like my husband always teaches me to be a Walmart greeter, you know, uh, that's taxable income. So you have to watch that out. So to clarify what this earning test really is, again, OPM penalizes each year based on the excess earnings in the previous year. So if you make too much in year 2020, your uh, supplement or your Social Security will be penalized in the following year. So you have to uh, consider that, you know, if I'm going to work this year, I'm going to be penalized next year. So again, the special retirement supplement stops at age 62 when you're eligible for social security and the earning test for the supplement is from MRA to age 62 on earned income. Okay, so we have an example here for those viewing the presentation. Yes, this example here uh, shows you the penalty box, so to speak. Uh, so you have a retiree here in March 2019. He has an MRA at age 56, has 30 years of credible service. So his supplemental annuity is 15,000 per year. And then in retirement from May to December 2019, the retiree earned income of 45,600. 
So you take the exempt amount for 2019, which is 17,640, and you begin to follow the formula here to calculate the penalty. So you take your earned income minus the exempt amount, which is again to 17, and you divide that number by two, and it comes up to 13,980. So again, you take, uh, you see the formula here for it underneath. So then the 15,000, that is your supplement, and you divide that by 12, it comes out to 12, 1,250. So let's just take the uh, 13,980, let's make it easier, and you subtract that from your 50 and uh, 15,000, so you have 1,165, and you are reduced now because you take the 1,165 from the 1250, and now your SRS check is uh, $85 a month. So remember the earnings test can eliminate your benefit uh, or it can greatly reduce it. And that's one of the things that as you think about working when you're collecting the supplemental check, you have to consider what is uh, of more importance to you is the monthly income or that supplement. So one of the things I know people are always trying to get away with, uh, maybe not having to report it, well, you know, the government is the government and OPM sends out every year uh, a requirement, a form for you to add in your annuity supplement and also your statement of earnings. So, you know, you can't get away with not doing the penalty box there. Uh, now, remember, again, special provisions will receive COLAs while they're in here, and the special provisions will not be subject to the earnings test until they reach the MRA. And the supplemental annuity is uh, not included in the interim pay while the benefits are being calculated but will be paid retroactively. So there's there's a couple of good things there that I like to restate because uh, it usually takes somebody 10 times to hear something before they it clicks. So what really happens if the Congress decides to eliminate the supplemental? Uh, and that is something that has been in discussion. And that leads to the uh, idea should we have an alternative retirement income or should we go ahead and work and not worry about it? So we need to consider uh, the elimination of the supplement and what we're going to do about that. And one of the reasons why the SRA, SRS, excuse me, would be eliminated is because if you were a private sector employee, and you retired before your social security age at 62, there would be no supplement. And so the government is trying to align the federal workers up again. We talked a little bit about this last podcast to be very much like the secular or the, the private uh, employees have it out here. And also they don't receive any kind of coal or anything like that. So these are some of the things that you should think about. And what happens if you take a reduced Social Security benefit at age 62? Well, that's one thing to consider. Most people do not realize that the Social Security is reduced if you take it at 62. And there again, that is why you have the earnings test again. So the earnings test, though, is a little bit different. It has the same numbers as far as you, how much earned income you have. But here's the, uh, the kicker here. If you take a look onto the uh, left side of the chart that's on the screen here, it says for every $3 an individual has earned above 48600 during the year 2020, Social Security Administration will hold $1 back of benefits. So these exempt amounts change from year to year. 
Again, this is if you've been uh, the 18, 2040 is from January 1 to December 31st. And then the 48,000 uh, is the month before you have your full year. And then once you re re uh, receive your full retirement age, then that's usually around uh, 66, mostly now 67. Then you, don't, you can still collect your social security um, and you can still earn as much as you want and you are not subject to the earnings test. So in conclusion, I'd like to just kind of go over some main points regarding the supplemental annuity. Again, uh, it does not receive any cost of living adjustments. COLAs, uh, it remains the same except for some special provisions until they reach you know, the MRA. One thing I haven't mentioned before, it is fully taxable. Social Security is taxable as well as uh, your supplement. It is subject to the earnings test. In particular, both the earnings test limits are the same. It's just the penalty is a little bit different. And the uh, main point to consider about Social Security is at age 62 or FRA, which, which we call the full retirement age. Again, it's still subject to your earnings test and you can delay your social, Secu social security benefit to age 70 and between your full uh, retirement age and 70 you do receive interest on that and that's one of the benefits uh, that you do receive earnings and it, again this is also taxable that's a lot of good information and it's a lot of tongue twisting in here too well, there's a lot of acronyms. Right. And, well, and thank that's you very much. Maybe uh, I should consider doing down here, uh, maybe on the next podcast or so, is take these acronyms and kind of list them for you as you go, so you can refer back to them as we talk. So that's that's something that maybe we'll do in the future. That's a good idea. Okay, so. Let's uh, talk about our next uh, session. What do we what do we be discussing? So um, we can let the audience know. Well, we're going to be talking a little bit about the thrift savings plan. We're going to be talking about the pitfalls and some things that um, I have had so many questions on when I uh, talk to different uh, government employees. Uh, one of the main differences is, is what's the difference between my thrift savings plan and IRA. So we're going to go over some of those things and some of uh, what you can and cannot do uh, just for your general purposes. So you will have that to think about and will probably prompt some of the questions that you would have. Okay, great. Um, so everybody look for that next episode to be uploaded next week sometime. In the meantime, if you have questions for Kathleen, uh, you can reach us on our 800 number, 888-545-8840. And uh, just let us know that you attended this session and you'd like to set up a complimentary consultation with Kathleen and her team. You can also um, go to fedchecklist.com, Fed checklist.com and you can put questions or comments on that site and we'll get them to Kathleen and her team to uh, follow up on. You can also download a workbook and retirement budget on that site. So thanks Kathleen. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure talking to everybody. Okay. This concludes our session today. Again, look for the TSP. Very important information coming up, and uh, you're going to want to know um, pros and cons and the best way to handle that very important retirement uh, program. We'll be back next week. Thank you.